Welcome back to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Hope you all had a very nice couple of days. And a quick shout out to my newest patrons, Kuberg USA, C Psyop, McGCH 46E, and William B. Thank you all for choosing to support the channel. All year, there's been speculation that Tesla was getting ready for a new AI voice assistant in its vehicles, specifically in the US, mainly because earlier this year, they did just that in the Chinese market. So in China, in addition to controlling parts of the vehicle with their voice, they can also get things like weather and stock updates. We're not quite there in the United States. It's looking like 2025 may be the year for that, hopefully via Grok. But for now, with the holiday update, there are some new voice commands to know. You can turn on and off HOV lanes. You can turn on or off avoid tolls. Finally, you can turn on and off headlights and you can turn on or off fog lights if your vehicle has them. Just know that the rumor right now is that in the first half of 2025, Tesla will unveil an entirely new AI voice system. On the screen right now, you're looking at all of the new supercharger locations from the quarter four voting results, so pause the screen if you'd like to look. Hertz is now asking their customers that are renting electric vehicles if they actually want to keep them. For some EV rentals, their customers now have the option to buy Buy that rental instead of returning it and the word is the deal may actually be better than what you can find on the Hertz website. To be clear these offers are not just for Tesla rentals but they're doing this for Chevy Bolts and Polestar 2s as well. The most recent update we got from the Hertz CEO was that they would be done offloading their Tesla vehicles by the end of 2025. Just keep in mind, if you check the Hertz website, you may only see tens or a few hundred Tesla vehicles listed, but that does not account for vehicles sold through other channels. As far as I can tell, every week Hertz is still selling hundreds of Tesla vehicles to dealerships through wholesale auctions. So they may be out of the Hertz inventory, but they're still on the market, which contributes to this chart from Charlie Bellello, the average price of a used Tesla. With the December data, we did see another tick down, but we're still at 30,000 $1,494 on average. But again, this steep drop off for the average price of a used Tesla was mostly behind us as of the end of spring this year. The Tesla account shared a nice video clip of FSD stopping at this green light as it recognized the emergency vehicle coming from the opposite direction, waited until it made it through the intersection, and then proceeded to go. If you go back and look where this light actually turned green, it was right here, and you can see the ambulance was still pretty far off in the distance, so good job by FSD in this scenario. I did want to add a quick PSA to this clip. To anybody looking to post FSD videos online, you don't need a fancy setup, but please post it with proof that the clip was actually using FSD. The truth is, with a clip like this, there's really no way to actually know for sure that it was indeed using FSD. I'm not trying to argue this clip is a lie, I'm just saying if you post a video where you can see the UI and see the blue wheel, then you take that off the table altogether. But part of the reason I believe this clip is legit is because it was indeed version 13.2.2. Another clip was shared where for a few seconds you may be wondering why isn't FSD going, then out of nowhere you see a runner coming from the right. And this is strictly anecdotal from my viewership experience, but it seems like with version 13 there is a higher percentage of instances where FSD is seeing things that the human driver may not see. The CEO of Lee Auto was asked why his company is using LiDAR when Elon and Tesla are not. It sounds like he got a bit defensive as he said, I believe that if Elon had ever driven on different highways in China deep in the night, he would have chosen to keep LiDAR in the front as well. He said China is different than the US. If you regularly drive at night in China, you'll see large trucks with broken taillights and the large trucks with broken and taillights maybe even parked right on the main road. He said, I think LiDAR is very important because our cars are family oriented and the safety of everyone's life is very important. That's the fundamental reason we continue to keep LiDAR and will still keep it in future models. Of course, in fairness, the jury is still out on this, especially in other markets. But we've heard the same argument for the past five years from almost everybody that's outside the Tesla bubble. And so far, at least in North America with version 13, Tesla seems to be doing quite well still without LiDAR. Plus this LiDAR argument was kind of the famous last words for Cruz, as they said, sometimes vision is not enough, especially at night. And now they're effectively out of business, even going the LiDAR route. 
And here's a quote from Elon. Vision became so good that radar actually reduced the signal to noise ratio, so radar was turned off. Adding radar data was actually giving the system more information than it needed and was negatively impacting the software. And when Andre Karpathy was at Tesla, he said that the radar was starting to add too much noise to the system and it was holding FSD back. So my point here, the challenge with LiDAR is not just about cost, although that's of course a big part of the puzzle. It's also about what will the vehicle do when you have contradictory inputs from the LiDAR or radar and the cameras, which gets to the problem of sensor fusion, which is really just trying to blend all of those different inputs and then make the right decision. Hopefully though, Tesla hits its target of releasing FSD for Chinese customers in quarter one, 2025, and then we can see some videos of it on the Chinese roads. There's a rumor that Tesla has signed a battery agreement with EVE Energy, a Chinese company building a new factory in Malaysia. They're supposedly going to start supplying Tesla with storage batteries by 2026. And possibly not only for Tesla's Megapack factory in Shanghai, but also Lathrop in the US. EVE has not yet confirmed that Tesla is the customer, but if it turns out to be true, they would be Tesla's sixth battery supplier. That would be in addition to Panasonic, LG, CATL, BYD, and Sunwoda. The company would be the third to supply energy storage batteries to Tesla in the US, in addition to CATL and BYD. They said Tesla has been increasing its battery supplier options to gain pricing power over batteries. Plus, LG Energy is trying to also supply cells to Tesla for its Megapack in the US. And we haven't heard much about this since, but Tesla did buy an LFP battery production line from CATL earlier this year and built an LFP energy storage battery factory in Nevada to begin in-house production of batteries for energy storage. Back to EVE, they did not specify the types of battery that have been ordered or the expected date when deliveries will start, but their factory in Malaysia is set to open quarter one, 2025. In a recent video out of China, they said Tesla's Megapack factory is set to be complete by the end of this year and will start production next year. One of the workers said it's almost done, now the main focus is on commissioning and trial production, 100% of the equipment has been installed. Tom Zhu chimed in on the factory progress saying many people underestimate Tesla's unique strength, developing manufacturing capabilities optimized for the fast evolving AI era. So from groundbreaking to completion, the Shanghai Mega Factory is looking at a timeline of about seven months, which compared to Lathrop, that was about 12 months. The Mega Factory in Lathrop actually began production in November of 2022. Then fast forward forward two years to November of this year when Tesla said they built their 10,000th Megapack. So in California, it took two years to build 40 gigawatt hours worth of Megapacks. But remember, for the Lathrop factory, they had to convert a former JCPenney warehouse, so it wasn't really built from the ground up. Tesla's energy storage deployed in quarter four, 2022, when the Lathrop factory went live with production was about 2.4 gigawatt hours. Then in less than two years with Lathrop ramping, they hit 9.4 gigawatt hours in a quarter, the high mark so far. Far. Now, yes, obviously these are deployment figures and not production figures. More importantly though, Tesla's energy profit in quarter four, 2022 was $159 million. Whereas for the most recent two quarters, Tesla's energy profit has been above $725 million per quarter. All of this to say with a purpose-built factory, Chinese labor and low supply chain costs in China, and the fact that the plan is to largely export these mega packs to global markets where you can sell at higher prices than directly in the Chinese market, over the next 12 to 18 months, Tesla could add roughly six gigawatt hours of energy deployments per quarter once the factory is ramped, and that could take energy profits well over $1 billion per quarter from this factory alone. The six gigawatt hours per quarter number is just 40 gigawatt hours produced across six quarters instead of the eight quarters it took the Lathrop factory. A security oversight by the software company Cariad left the location data of 800,000 VW Group electric cars in Europe exposed on the internet for several months. The public 
publication said it found several terabytes of data accessible on Amazon cloud storage, including the precise location of 460,000 vehicles that could allow it to draw conclusions about the lives of those who own the vehicles. Whether it's VW allowing your data to be hacked or GM outright selling your consumer data to third-party companies, I'd encourage all of you to kick off 2025 making your family's privacy a higher priority a very easy way to do that is signing up for Delete Me, the sponsor of this video. Whether your info has been in a breach or not, if you use the internet regularly, your information is likely plastered all over the internet thanks to all of these data brokers. But luckily, a company like Delete Me exists and they will remove all of your personal information from each and every data broker so you don't have to do any of that annoying work. And listen, I've been with Delete Me for over a year and in my most recent report, they still found found over 214 pieces of my personal information online. How is that possible? Because new data brokers are constantly cropping up. And guess what? I continue to use the internet to buy things and I run a large portion of my business right through the internet. But look, even if you're just online shopping or browsing, most of that activity is being tracked and in some cases it's being sold. With each report, Delete Me will list every data broker and tell you the status of your removal on that site, whether it's clean or whether your removal is in progress. Just a heads up, there's a joindeleteme.com slash electrified, which is the brand I'm affiliated with, and then there's a deleteme.com, which I have nothing to do with. And to ensure you don't get confused, you can just click my link directly in the description. Trying out these sponsors really is one of the best ways you can support Electrified if you're interested. And in this case, Delete Me will give you 20% off your subscription if you use my link below. Or if it's easier, you can use the QR code right on the screen. In a year in which Tesla Sweden has faced unprecedented hurdles with the unions over there, the Model 3 was the winner of the 2024 car of the year. Not only that, but the Model Y in Sweden might again be Sweden's best-selling car model for 2024. On the new Model 3, they said it's such a refined and well-rounded vehicle, it completely blows the competition out of the water. The publication said, how can other car manufacturers still not have caught up with Tesla? The Model 3, which was already the market leader with its substantial update, became an even better car and that without becoming more expensive. The Model 3 remains the benchmark in its class, not only in terms of practicality, but also in terms of price. The Epoch Times has announced Elon Musk as the innovation newsmaker of the year for 2024. The award was determined by a survey of just over 6,300 readers. Elon won 96.5% of the first place votes. Typically, awards like this just focused on high level stuff like Tesla's autonomy or SpaceX and Starship or Neuralink. But in this case, they actually called out Tesla starting to produce prototype battery cells using dry cathode technology. So that was cool to see the dry cathode getting some public press. Replying to the news of the award, Elon said, that's nice. The weekly Tesla China data came in at 17,600 for the week, comparing it to the same week in quarter three, that number was 13,800. So quarter over quarter, Tesla China is now up 11.96%. Week 12 in quarter four last year came in at 18,500. So year over year, Tesla China is now up 13.18%. For Tesla to set a new quarterly record, they only need 4,148 for the final week of the quarter. Then looking at the year to date numbers, year over year, Tesla China is up 7.46%. There's a narrative out there that Tesla China has been killing it. And while they've been doing well, if you look at the numbers domestically, they're really only up again, just over 7% for the year. Hopefully in 2025, Tesla can get back to that 20 to 30% delivery growth figure. The point I'm trying to reiterate as many incentives for EVs and specifically for Tesla are likely to go away into 2025 it feels like autonomy is getting ready at the perfect time. And yes, I know we're in between growth waves right now, but all I'm trying to say is that it does look like we found the saturation levels for Tesla's sexy lineup globally. A friendly reminder, in February of this year, Elon said the production design is complete for the next-gen Roadster, and they were planning on an unveil for the end of this year, and they're aiming to ship it next year. Obviously, it looks like we're not going to get the unveil this year, 
here, but hopefully we hear something about it soon. In case you missed it, Tesla is launching supercharger battery heating at V3 and V4 posts in cold climates. When plugging in, superchargers can now preheat batteries for the Model 3 and Y that are standard range rear wheel drive LFP packs. You should still precondition your battery, but this is an added little feature. But it may not be little as Max said through an AC ripple current coming from the superchargers, cold soaked LFP vehicles will be able to get back on the road up to four times faster. Just know a cold soaked vehicle is one that's been left in the cold for an extended period of time. Also important to note, this feature is only for LFP batteries, usually because they're more susceptible to colder temperatures. And listen, I'm not an engineer, but if I'm understanding this correctly, it's like that AC ripple current is superimposed on the DC charging current, which actually creates a certain waveform. And those high frequency current oscillations actually induce rapid small scale charge and discharge cycles where the electrode meets the electrolyte. And ultimately those rapid cycles help to create heat. And Max did say the supercharger sends an AC ripple current through the battery to help warm it up compared to before where the battery alone was warming itself up in the case of preconditioning. So now V3 and V4 supercharger stalls can also help to heat up your LFP battery packs. I mean, look, calling them a car company, I think is actually, a per it's an insult. This is a disruptive technology company that now when you look at autonomous and robotics, that's the next step in the Tesla stores, the gold at the end of the rainbow. And that's why I think we're just getting started in this next stage of Tesla as autonomous now becomes front and center over the coming years. 515's base case, bull case is 650. And, and, and Nicole, I think it would be conservative when you think about 2 trillion. I mean, I think this is one of it, if it plays that, because we assume no value for Optimus. You start to put Optimus value in there, you get a lot more than two trillion. Tesla stock closed the day at $431.66, down 4.95%, while the NASDAQ was down 1.49%. The volume was 7% lower than the average. Don't forget, check out Delete Me linked below. Grab that 20% off if you're interested, and thank you in advance if you do. Hope you guys have a wonderful and a safe weekend. I do plan to upload on Monday, and then we'll go from there. Just in terms of next week. Please like the video if you did, and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.